Tonight, a very special guest, a person who's been described as a spiritual rock star, as a 21st century mystic, as someone who has the answers to the questions you didn't dare to ask, and he likes motorcycles as well. Sadhguru Jaggi Vasudev Ji, the founder of the Isha Foundation, often speaks at world leadership forums, but also in the villages of Coimbatore. And currently, he's traveling in a unique mission, Youth and Truth, speaking to young people in college campuses around the country. Sadhguruji, thank you very much for being part of the NDTV Dialogues, and we have a young audience here as well. Why did you decide to speak to the young people of India and in different college campuses, IITs, IIMs, even JNU? It's an interesting choice. Why have you decided to go to all these college campuses? Well, in the last uh, 36 years that I've been active with people, this is one constant refrain. Thousands of people have asked me this question. Sadhguru, when I was twenty, where were you? Now you come when I'm sixty <laughs> If you had come when I was twenty, I would have lived in a different way. So I decided we will step out and meet all those people in this country who are below twenty-five years of age. Mm -hmm. Because essentially, what we are referring to as life is just a combination of a certain amount of time and certain amount of energy. Mm -hmm. Our time is ticking away as we sit here. Whether we talk, we are silent, we are sleeping, we are awake, we do something, we do nothing, time just rolls away for all of us. Mm -hmm. So it's only the energy we can manage. So when we say that, li that segment of life that we call as youth, at that segment, in that segment, they are at the peak of their energy, they are at the highest level of exuberance of energy. Most youth don't understand this, they think they are going to be like that forever, but it is not so, it's only in that segment of life it happens that way. At that time, if there was a little more clarity and balance to life, mm -hmm. that energy could become something else altogether. And we see that youthful energy expressed in so many ways. There's also dissent on college campuses, there's questions on college campuses, there are movements which people call anti-national on college campuses. Why do you see the clashes between young people and the establishment, whether it's a political establishment, whether it's a vice chancellor, and that's across the country in different states, different state governments. I think it's uh, more than the youth. Uh, unfortunately, this has happened in the country. We need to relook at it. Political parties of all kinds have entered university campuses. University campus should be left to the students and the youth. They can do their own stuff. But political parties putting money and people into that place, both from whatever sides I'm saying, I think it's creating a wrong uh, atmosphere where it's becoming people are taking sides at very young age. It's very important when you're young, you don't take sides, you look at everything fresh and see what is the best thing we can do for ourselves, for the society in which we live, the country in which we live, the world in which we live, mm -hmm. what's the best thing we can do? But uh, I think it's becoming very, very vitiated and people are taking sides when they're very young, which should not happen. And also, the, I think perhaps the adult dominance of the young as well and how we see them. Where, what do you think these definitions like anti-national that are thrown around depending on who's saying it? Uh, I don't think it's… I think this is only in Delhi. Really? <laughs> in the rest of the country, <laughs> there is no such thing. <laughs> Only in Delhi because Delhi is the hotbed of uh, politics and everything is political here. But in the rest of the country, it's not so. Well, th <laughs> that's nice. Of course, West Bengal universities, we always know, also been a hotbed of political activism. Tamil Nadu, Rajasthan. But what do you think of I, the JNU visit? I think uh, the impressions, okay, young people say what they say. Their opinions will evolve over a period of time. There's no need to brand them as this or that at an early age. Well, uh, I must tell you, I was… Uh <laughs> I'm on national television <laughs> At the age of fourteen, I almost joined armed struggle in Andhra Pradesh. Really? These were the, ho these were the heady days of Charu Majumdar and Somalu and uh, Che had di just died mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, fully fired up and Almost on the verge, something went wrong in the organization which didn't allow me to join at that time. Otherwise, two of my friends joined, some things happened, one we just vanished, another one was shot dead by the police about six years ago. Mm -hmm. They were very close to me, we were all together. 
but certain internal things didn't allow me to join at that time. So, when we are young, revolution is the most romantic thing. It is just that uh, as we grow little more mature, we see that the time for revolution or at least armed revolution is over. Those times are over. We should have been born in nineteenth or eighteenth century if we wanted to be in armed revolutions. <laughs> Those revolutions are over. Now we have to employ democratic process to make change. That's fascinating because otherwise uh, you would have been called an urban Naxal. So it's like I'm glad that you stayed out of mm. armed struggle. See, uh, I mean, uh, let us not uh, get uh, caught up with terminology. Mm -hmm. Naxalism was very much a part of seventies uh, and early eighties. It was not… Uh, today I think it's become much less a fringe, but at that time it was reasonably mainstream, at least for the youth. Mm -hmm. So it was not seen as uh, something against the country or whatever. We saw it as the only solution because the, it looked like nation was just uh, spinning on the spot, mm -hmm. not getting anywhere. The nation was not really getting anywhere. If at all, if you had to infuse some energy into this country, the only way was this, at least that's how we thought. Mm -hmm. Well, since then India has moved a long way and many things have happened. This doesn't mean everything is perfect, there are still many more things to be fixed in this country, but at least we know with democratic process, we are moving towards solutions. Mm -hmm. So today, we have to look at it differently. Sadhguruji, we have some questions here also, and I have Rahul who has a question to ask. What is different between success and significance? Success and, and significance. Significance. significance, please. See, today, unfortunately, success is defined as if you're doing little better than your neighbor, you're successful. This definition of success should go. It's very important that all of you young people and everybody, is your life precious, I'm asking? Hello? Is your life precious? <laughs> if it's a precious life, what are you going to invest this life into? This is something we have to look at as profoundly as it's possible for you at this stage in your life. But without thinking whether you are investing this precious life into the right things or not, if you simply throw it around, you may be still successful compared to somebody else. You will always be successful compared to somebody else. If you compare yourself with a beggar on the street, you are successful. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean anything. Just you're earning a few rupees more doesn't make you successful. Success means at least you're finding full potential to who you are in terms of your intelligence, your capability and competence. You're fi finding full expression to who you are. This is important. So if you are doing that, and if we have managed to organize our competence in sync with many other people, then what we are doing may become significant, may. But world also has to cooperate to become significant <laughs> Amongst all the questions we've taken already, and you've said that there are no holds barred, what have been the questions that have come up the most for young people today to you? Well, everybody is talking about relationships, sexuality, drugs, alcohol <laughs> This is the common thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are many people, a whole lot of them, about their aspirations, confusions about what to do and what not to do in their life, how to deal with their uh, parents who seem to be, uh, you know, seem to have a, a dinosaur's brain and uh, this kind of things. <laughs> <laughs> what about the issue for young people, which we found a lot in our journalism has been the issue of jobs and, and unemployment. Has that been a central issue? Not at all. Mm -hmm. Not at all, except in I am Bangalore, one question came up and you know that's been a lot of mm -hmm. uh, disturbance in the country. <laughs> the Twitter RT has been going crazy. What I said was, this is a management school, the elite management school. They're asking, will I get a job? I said, being in a develop developing country, a developing country means still a whole lot of things are not done yet. And we are giving you the best education. We are giving an MB, uh, MBA in IIM, mm -hmm. in a beautiful, fabulous, uh, you know, campus. I said, studying here, it should be a shame that you are asking me, where will you get a job? You must see what you can create in this country because there's so much to be done. Mm -hmm. 
because we are not a developed country where, oh, what shall I do? There is so much to be done. If you just open your eyes and look, there are a thousand things to be done for everybody, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That is what a developing country means. So this is a time when we can have the joy of creating this nation. Later on, the next generation may enjoy the comforts of it, but we know the striving and the joy of creating something or making something happen. So, it is… Uh, I mean, now that you ask me, it's amazing that nobody asked about employment except this one question in IIM Bangalore. <laughs> that's, that's actually, that's, that's really an eye, an eye opener, that's very interesting because in fact in so many of the recent uh, agitations I would say, whether it's the issue of reservations, whether it's the issue of quotas, uh, Patel quota, X quota, Y quota and it comes all across the country. Often we say that joblessness is the core of that but you actually have a different perspective then on that. It's not my perspective, you asked me if they asked questions, they did not, it's okay. their perspective. Mm -hmm. But when you see these uh, different protests which are up in different states, it can be Gujarat, it can be Tamil Nadu, I it think, can be Bihar. Uh, a whole lot of uh, caste quota things, it has become a means for somebody to become a leader, okay, unfortunately. Unfortunately in this country still, still we are in this mode that if you want to become a leader in some capacity, you don't have to create anything, you don't have to build anything, you don't have to make anything happen. You gather hundred people and block the highway, make everybody's life miserable for three days, you may get elected mm -hmm. because they, they think you are a leader. This has to change. If we want to build a nation, this has to change. People who create something, people who strive for something to make things happen for this country, they must become leaders. Right now, there's a whole lot of people who are giving commentary on everybody's mistakes, how they've done this wrong, that wrong. See, only those who are striving to create something can make mistakes. Those who are giving live commentary on everybody else's life, they can't make any mistakes because they're not doing anything in their life. Mm -hmm. What about young people here? Anything on that? Uh, go ahead. Good evening, Sadhguruji. Uh, so, I feel personally that this is an issue which uh, plagues a lot of the, you know, mental thought process of people of our generation that we are stuck in a rut race to an extent to you know carve out a certain career at this stage at which we're trying to establish ourselves and become somebody in this world do you feel that at such an age we can find some space for a spiritual aspect at this age or maybe we can channelize that for the betterment of the society or the country in some manner or another while in the midst of this competition see uh, you are not in the midst of any competition you're in the midst of carving out your life, all right? Everybody is in the process. Because we are pretty crowded, maybe we'll step on each other's feet a little bit <laughs> because <laughs> we are too many people and here and there we step on each other's feet. Now, if you want to do something well, whatever your job or your business or your education, if you want to do it well, the most important thing is you have clarity and you have balance and you know how to harness this body and this brain. So this is what spiritual process means. Spiritual process means approaching your well-being in a scientific manner as a technology for well-being. Well, people have been projecting it as spirituality means looking up or looking down. No, spirituality has always been in this culture been described as self-knowledge, isn't it? When should you get to know about the nature of who you are, at the beginning of your life or at the end of your life? That's all <laughs> What's interesting, Sadhguruji, is that you're not wedded to any particular ideology well, as I'm not such. wedded to anybody. Or, or to anybody <laughs> <laughs> To anybody and any… Or anything, yes. <laughs> to anything or to any ideology. But what we often see around us, I'm glad I'm making you smile, <laughs> I said, well, but it, it doesn't take much effort. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. It's wonderful to be smiling all the time. But I think what often comes up in this whole clash of ideologies, as it were, comes questions about whose ideology is better, who's majoritarian here. What when we talk about Indian culture, does that become associated with an ideology? How do we differentiate these things? Even yoga, for instance, gets associated with an ideology, which seems sad. Uh, this uh, compartmentalization is being made by people who have nothing to do with those things. Nobody who is practicing yoga is making it an ideology. Those who are practicing know what's the benefit of it. Those who are not practicing, they say, oh, you're all yoga lot, you're all this, you're all that. This labeling is happening from outside. 
first of all, ideology means you are trying to concretize some part of your life, okay? You are trying to concretize something simply because you lack, lack consciousness. You don't have the consciousness to simply look at everything fresh, every moment of your life and grasp for what it is. You want to concretize this and say, this is it, this is it, this is it. This is an automated way of functioning. But once we came here as human beings, you know, only to <laughs> to the humans we refer to you as… we refer to you as a human being. We don't call a tiger as a tiger being or elephant as an elephant being, an ant as an ant being, because they all live in reaction to what happens around them. Whatever the surroundings, surroundings throw at them, they will react to them as they know best from their instinctive way of doing things. We are supposed to know how to be. Tch, how far away from that most people are, <laughs> that's another matter. But essentially we are supposed to know how to be. If we knew how to be, would you keep yourself blissful or miserable? I'm asking all the young people. If you know how to be, would you keep yourself blissful or miserable? Blissful. blissful. If you are blissful, would you concretize anything within yourself? You would look at life fresh, you would engage and involve in everything and according to your intelligence at that moment, you will decide what to do. Mm -hmm. Is it the perfect thing? Maybe not. Somebody else always can find fault with what I'm doing, but at least I'm not stuck to something. I'm always an active intelligence looking at how to do every aspect of my life. This is what needs to happen in the country, this is the basis of this culture. We never had even a moral code in this country simply because we relied on human consciousness, never on a morality. Nobody ever, even the so-called divine entities in this culture, never ever gave us a commandment. This is what you must do, this is what you should not do. It's always been a debate and a debate. Even when <laughs> when a Shiva or a Krishna comes, endless debate, isn't it? Questions and questions and questions. So this is the culture because in this culture, it is about consciousness. It is not about concretization of our ideas. So why then do we see so many rules that seem to be laid down, whether it's about eating beef, whether it's about… Uh, whether it's about section 377, whether it's about the way a good Hindu should be or a good Muslim should be or a good Catholic should be. Why are we seeing so many… why is religion and religious… religious rules taking center stage? See, uh, many things that you mentioned right now, either uh, about the cow slaughter or the 377, none of these things are religious. How are they religious? Why are you saying it's religious? It is of cultural significance, it's of economic significance. People are missing the whole point that bovine animals are the basis of our wealth in the village. Those of you living in the city, maybe you've not seen a cow, so what can we do about that? Mm -hmm. But I'm saying if you live in a village, cattle are your economic wealth. And if somebody steals it from you, naturally you're going to run after it, especially because you can cut it and eat it up and my wealth will disappear. Can't trace it, it's not like a car. I can go and find it somewhere. If you eat up my bow bovine animal or even a goat or a sheep, see, you must understand, it, these things happen not only for a cow. Even if you steal a sheep or a goat, it still happens. But people are leaving it. But lynchings, uh, Sadhguruji, uh, see, lynchings at this time is yes, the 21st century. Yes, you know century. that I have spoken about it, but you're again asking the question. Yes. You know I have clearly spoken about this. What I'm saying is, we have a nation Still, geographically, our law does not cover every square inch of this nation, okay? Law cannot reach, it is simply not equipped. Right now, suppose you steal my cow, what am I supposed to do, go and file an FIR? You think so? And go to the court and after twenty years, I will get my justice for my cow? My cow is gone means tomorrow my children won't eat. This is my condition of poverty. When this is the condition of poverty, in the villages they have their own norms. If you steal a cow, what we will do to you? If you touch my daughter, what we will do to you? If you do something else, what we will do to you? They got their own mob justice. But Sadhguruji, these are not really the villagers. These we seem organized 
groups of yeah. Gao Rakshaks, yeah. or even the Prime Minister said these are not Gao Rakshaks, these are vigilantes. No, no, see, crime happens in the country. I'm not giving a commentary on the crime situation. Yes. Many kinds of crimes happen. Out of that, somebody misuses this also and it happens, I'm not mm -hmm. talking about that. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about, people are talking about lynchings. Maybe even the media doesn't know this, let me say this, because media is reporting forty-two lynchings in the country. Believe me, many, many more happen. Not all may die, but thrashing of somebody because he stole something, especially when it comes to animals, why animals get more attention is, you can take an animal, cut it in your house, eat it up, make meat out of it, sell it somewhere, it's gone, no proof, okay? If you, st if you steal my land, I can come and prove you've taken my land. You take my car or motorcycle, I can come and prove you've taken it. When you take my animal, in two days' time you'll make it vanish. There's no proof. So always the reaction for animals and children is big. Gee, but I'm looking at it more also from the a point of aspect of the re religious angle, because has it become uh, leaving aside the issue of cow uh, I slaughter? Think, uh, I, think the I think all the television channels. I think all the television channels are trying hard to give it a religious angle. You must stop that. You think it's only yes. television channels, uh, Sadhguruji? Uh, I'm saying there is. You don't think? No, it's no, a there reality? is a problem. I'm not saying there's no problem in mm -hmm. this country. There is a problem. Do we want to settle the problem? Do you want to aggravate the problem? That is a question you must all answer. Mm -hmm. How do you think we can settle this problem? Because that really See, must be the focus. One important thing is, one important thing is, everybody knows where the hot spots are in the country. It's not all over the place. Mm -hmm. It's just a few hot spots. These hot spots can be managed proper, policing can be done, enforcement can be done, those who are vulnerable can be protected properly. If you just do that for six months to one year, when that situation passes, some situation is there, anger builds up among people. So when that happens, it needs to be managed. Instead of that, somebody is playing with it, all right? Mm -hmm. When you play with it, what is a quarrel becomes a fight, what's a ba fight becomes killing. We must understand this is how the social dynamics function. Mm -hmm. Do you think politics and religion now need to be separate in a sense? Do you think this cocktail of the mixture of religion and politics is not working? See, it is clearly separate in our constitution. I don't see how it is mixed up. Mm -hmm. Our idea of separation, if it is a politician should not go to the temple or mosque or church, no, that is not how it is. They can privately practice whatever they want. But religion and politics are distinctly separate in this country as per the constitution. Mm -hmm. It is only certain people saying, which never gets any attention, certain people are clearly saying our religion is superior to the constitution, we will not follow the constitution, we will follow only our religion. But uh, Nothing is said about that. Action should be taken about that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Of course. What's, uh, what's interesting, Sadhguruji, is also now we've seen many yogis and politics. You've seen whether it's uh, Baba Ramdev, or often talking on I think on Baba politics. Ramdev is in business. Exactly. So whether it's <laughs> yogis in, in politics or business, why is, can spirituality, can the whole ascetic nature of being a yogi mix with politics and uh, business and other statements? You've made some political statements <coughs> which your political leaders have reacted Bef to on Sterlight. Before you ask that question, you must ask a question, because I am a yogi, will you give me a tax benefit? Will you let me drive on the street without a license? Will you let me fly without a ticket? Will you? No. no. Then, <laughs> when I'm fulfilling all the responsibilities of being a citizen, what is the problem about my rights as a citizen? Mm -hmm. What is the issue about that? Well, the yogi is fulfilling all the responsibilities of being a citizen in this country. Mm -hmm. So he must be a citizen without rights, is it? Is that what you're asking? No, I'm asking should yogis be politically involved or politically involved They can involved be involved in anything in this in country as long as it's legal. <laughs> they can even become journalists. I may become, just hold on. <laughs> See, in this country, we are right now one of the biggest and the most significant and important thing that we need to do is we need economic development in the country. Mm -hmm. Why? Still because five hundred million people have not even eaten properly, forget about anything else. Mm -hmm. hmm? When five hundred million people in a nation are going to bed without enough food in their stomach, this is nothing else. First thing is economic development. If economic development needs to happen, 
If somebody starts a successful business, whether he is a yogi or a journalist or a politician or insane man, it doesn't matter. If he's running a legitimate business successfully, should we applaud that or should we worry about it? But it doesn't contradict it. Then how is a yogi different from anyone else? So how is yogi, yogi different is, from the yogi worldly is capable, pleasures? <laughs> yogi is capable of doing anything effortlessly, you know. I will tell you, uh, some conference in Chennai and uh, I'm driving, I mean, they're driving me. Normally, I don't let anybody drive me because mm -hmm. I don't like the way they drive, <laughs> most of them. <laughs> most of them don't know where they're going when they're driving. So, this not going anywhere, it's getting late. I have a reputation in this thirty-six years, I have not been late to a single event, including today <laughs> Not a single event have I been late anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. though I may have four, five events in a day. So, I see this man is not getting anywhere, so I ask him to get off and I get into the driver's seat and do some aggressive driving. And uh, you know all this, uh, now all the hotels, after that uh, Mumbai event, you know, Mumbai yes. attack, Everywhere you have to stop, he will open the bonnet, he'll look at the boot, he doesn't know what he's looking at. Is he checking my engine? I don't know. So one car goes ahead, before the barrier comes down, I just zoom through that. Go and <laughs> leave the car in the portico and run into the hotel for the conference. So I am on time, I finish my conference and I come, some journalists are waiting. They said, you drive your own car. But in ancient times, yogis used to walk. I said, you idiot, in ancient times everybody used to walk, huh? <laughs> not just the yogis <laughs> I'm saying our, most people's idea of a yogi is from a calendar. They think still the yogi should be doing the same thing. You must understand that was just one picture that was taken of the man. He was doing many things in his life <laughs> One other aspect, uh, uh, Sadhguruji, and this I think is a warning thing, is the high incidence now of violence against women, the whole assault on women, the rapes we're seeing around the country, and now worse and worse, we also see this in religious institutions, whether it's uh, some uh, Baba, whether it's in a Muslim cleric, whether it's in a Catholic church, this high incidence of religious violence, even in religious institutions, do people lose faith in institutions when we hear of incidents like this? See, unfortunately, if... Uh our Indian journalism makes an effort to travel to all the institutions, irrespective of their whatever backgrounds and their attachments, and report what are all wonderful things they are doing. It would make an interesting story. But you report only when somebody does something wrong like this. There are thousands of institutions. Till now, in the last ten years, you might have reported about a dozen nasty ones. Mm -hmm. But only rotten apples get reported. Really sweet ones never get reported. I have somehow managed to sit with you, otherwise <laughs> Not at I all, Sadhguruji, <laughs> we've reported on your work and many other work across no, the country. No, no, I'm so saying, uh, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it looks like they're all doing wrong things simply because only these dozen people got reported. Mm -hmm. All the other wonderful people are doing a whole lot of work. They never get reported. They may not have the wherewithal like me to go everywhere in the world and do everything. They may be just in their own region, they are doing good work, whole lot of them. Okay, so these are isolated. But just, uh, and an interesting, because when you made that point also about uh, spirituality and how Twitterati, because you, of course, in your views on feminism, have got a lot of feedback on that, including from a senior IPS officer saying, what are women's <coughs> duties? What did you mean when you said about <laughs> feminism, that a feminist sh uh, shouldn't today be, become like men? And uh, we have, uh, this is an imported style of U.S. feminism. You got a lot of flack on that. No, no flack. A huge amount Good of question. appreciation. <laughs> a handful of people, handful of people because this has become the unfortunate situation in the country. This is not the first time. Every time I speak something, there is a group of people who are always waiting to mischievously edit those things and put out in a provocative way. Well. When you're having a conversation, you say many things. Mm -hmm. In that, you cut out two sentences and say, this is what he said. This is just ridiculous stuff. So I don't respond to those things, simply because it's obvious they're motivated people. Leaving that aside, about feminism, after that I tweeted two more, because somebody that I knew, some very prominent woman, 
uh, wrote to me and said, Sadhguru, why is it coming out like this? This is… these are not your words. I said, these are not my words, they're editing it and doing this. So I again tweeted twice so that it's clear to them. See, essentially what I said was, if money is the only value in a society, what is masculine will rule, whether you like it or you don't like it, okay? I'm talking masculine, not men. Mm -hmm. So if masculine rules, if women want to be successful, what do they have to do? They have to shed their feminine nature, act like men. This is a sad society. If you… if you just beat out all feminine nature in this world, this will become an ugly world. So I said, if, ma if money is the only value, male is the only value. Now they're saying, should we not earn money? Who said you should not? But it should be… that should be the basic value. The economics should be the basic value of our life. Right now it's become like this. If you say a big man in Delhi, do you mean to say he's got a big brain? Do you mean to say he's got a big heart? No, he's got a big pocket. Of course. So that's the only thing we're referring to. When we go like this in a society, we will destroy the feminine nature. Unless there is equal opportunity for all aspects of life in a given society, there is value for everything, only then feminine will flourish. Final thoughts, I think Sakshi has a question uh, for you as well. Sakshi, go ahead. So we all saw that how you and Baba Ramdev drove, uh, rode your Duc uh, Ducati into the Isha Foundation campus. So your liking towards your bikes is since the teenage or this is something you have developed over the years. And don't you think that uh, a, yo a yoga guru riding a bike in India is m much a cooler topic and then you th even you uh, should think about uh, your dress sense and all in that case? <laughs> Bikes keep you young, Sadhguruji <laughs> <laughs> See, I've been riding. I started riding a scooter when I was nine years of age. And uh, I rode from Mysore to Bangalore, 140 kilometers when I was twelve and a half, thirteen years of age. Without my father's knowledge in the evening, I took the scooter all the way to Bangalore and brought it back. It was a big adventure <laughs> So f me and two wheels, they just go together, okay? <laughs> And you, I read that you slept on your motorcycle many nights as well. Uh, I've crisscrossed India on my motorcycle. For about seven, eight years, I literally lived on a motorcycle. So since then, I've been so busy, not much opportunity. Here and there, I ride off-road. When I get the opportunity, when I see a motorcycle, I will rip it a little bit <laughs> So that day, you know, when I go for work inside the ashram, it's easier to ride a two-wheeler than drive something. Mm. So I was at work, he was supposed to come at four o'clock. Then at three-forty, they said, he's already here. Then I couldn't… I was supposed to go and pick him up in my car. Instead, uh, I went there on a motorcycle just for fun. I said, why don't you come? And he was a game <laughs> So he sat on the motorcycle and we just rode. And uh, nobody captured this video. What happened was, see, this is the thing of the day. People who are standing along the road, Many of them in their cell phones caught this video. So someone took all these bits and pieces, put it together <laughs> and made a video of it. There was no one camera following this motorcycle because it was just an ad hoc thing. <laughs> no, well, I think it's fascinating. We called uh, Baba Ramdev came on our program. We called him the yogi billionaire. It's actually fascinating. I think as you've made the point, being a yogi is about what's inside you, not about these outside labels at all. It is, uh, being a yogi means both physically, mentally, consciousness-wise, consciousness you are absolutely flexible <laughs> <laughs> Sadhguruji, thank you so much for thank being you. on the NDTV <laughs> Dialogues. And congratulations because you're getting a, a award from the president for your role, of course, in rural sports, which is uh, something, that, that a is major something, focus also we covered. That is something you must come and… Uh, <laughs> See, this whole thing started off because uh, I encountered some very caste-related opposition when I was doing some work. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took me some time to realize because I was making them, forcing them to eat together, different caste groups. In whatever in their tradition, it says mm -hmm. you can't eat with this caste or that caste. I tried and things broke out, a certain amount of friction happened. Then I came up with the idea, let them play together. Nowhere in the tradition does it say they should not play together. There is no book to say you cannot play together. Something somewhere says you are not supposed to eat together. But playing together, there's no restriction, they started playing. 
they forgot their caste or creed and everything. That's wonderful. <laughs> Sports is a unifier. <laughs> yes. And of course... So, uh, we coined this thing, a ball can change the world. <laughs> and uh, today, it's a massive uh, process. Last year, we did in collaboration with UNICEF. This year on 9th of uh, December, young people should come and participate in this. On 9th of December, we have a event where from all rural Tamil Nadu and some from Andhra Pradesh, nearly 38,000 players are wow. involved in the tournament. Fantastic. And uh, <laughs> I applaud this initiative of you reaching out to the young people of India because I think that really is our future. Thank you, Sadhguruji, for being part of this.